Barrett. Uh, this is going to be a quick Unreal Engine tutorial on how to set up asset validators in Blueprint in order to check your assets and validate your content. Uh, this can be a pretty handy feature if you're looking to kind of automate some of your checks and make sure that your developers are naming things correctly or that you're naming things correctly without having to go through manually and check stuff. And it's important because if stuff is named incorrectly and you're not sticking to a proper naming structure, it can lead to all sorts of issues later on or make it complex to write uh, tools later on because everything's kind of all over the place. So in order to do this, I'm going to go ahead and show you an example just so you know what we're going to build. So here I have a static mesh validator. So this checks static meshes and checks to see if their prefix is SM underscore, uh, which is a pretty common naming convention. So for this, all we have to do is I'm going to go to level prototyping inside of this first person template, click on meshes. And you can see that we have five meshes, all of which start with SM underscore. So I'm going to right click on this meshes folder. And you have an option here called validate assets in folder. It's second from the bottom. So I'm going to click that, click yes. And you can see that it succeeded and that it checked five files, passed five files, failed zero files. And this checks out because all five of those were static meshes and all five of them were named correctly. They had SM underscore. Now, if you go to maybe architecture here and starter content, you can see we have a bunch of different uh, static meshes, but only one of them has SM underscore. So I'm expecting this one to pass and the rest to fail. So if we right click on architecture, validate assets and folder, click yes, you can see that we have a bunch of fails. And if I go to the bottom here, you can see dat the data validation failed. We checked 11 files, one of them passed. So that's the one that's named correctly and the other 10 failed. And if you actually look at these, let's say we look at this bottom one here uh, and we go over to the side, you can see that we have an error. Uh, it's missing the correct prefix of SM underscore. And this is the validator that threw that error, which is the one we built. So uh, how do you actually build this? Let's go back to my folder here, asset validation, and let's create one of these to check materials. So if we right click, and we go to editor utilities. We want to make an editor utility blueprint. From here, you want to search for validator and we need editor validator base. So select that. And I'm gonna name this UBP for utility blueprint. And then I'm gonna put an underscore. I'm gonna call this material validator. All right, let's go ahead and open that up. So this is going to create a unique blueprint that's got some built-in functions. So if we come over to functions here, you can see that there's three overridable functions. And if we go over to override and click it, you can see that we have can validate, can validate asset and validate loaded asset. So in this case, we want to do can validate asset because we're going to be checking materials, which are assets. So that's going to go ahead and override this function, open it up for us. And all we have to do is take our in asset. So when this goes to check the asset, it's going to load it. And we just want to check to see, is this a material? Cause that's the thing we want to check. So we're going to cast to material. So this is going to cast to whatever the object is. If it's a material, then we're going to basically continue on the validation. If it's not a material, it'll just skip it. And in this case, we can actually just make this a pure cast. So just right click on it, go down to convert to pure cast. And we can actually just take the success and put it into the return node. So it's going to go through a list of assets in a folder. It's going to see if they're a material. If it is cast to it. And then if it's a successful cast, then we go to the return node. So I'm going to compile and save. And now we can move on to our second function, which is where this return leads. And that's validate loaded assets. So after it loads it, let's validate it. So in this function is where we're going to build in the checks to see if it passes or if it fails. So we're going to drag this over. And then from here, we want to take our in asset and we just want to get object name. All right, from here, 
we want to see if the prefix starts with M underscore, which is a common naming convention for materials. So we just have to say starts with. Okay, drag this over. So we can see, does this object name start with, and we can add a prefix. So for this, I'm actually gonna right click and promote to variable. I'm gonna call this variable prefix and just organize this real quick. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit compile just so that way we can actually name this. And for prefix, I'm gonna put capital M underscore because we want to check to see if the material starts with capital M underscore. And then in this case, we want to use case sensitive because we want to make sure that people aren't using lowercase m and capital M and so on. It's just a little bit more strict, which leads to just better practices in general with naming convention. So from here, we want to just hold down B and click to add a branch. And I'm just gonna connect that here. And we're gonna put this value. So if it does start with M underscore, we're gonna put that into the condition. And we're gonna say that if that's true, asset passes. And we're just gonna plug that into this return. And in the return, we're gonna say it's valid. And then we also have to put in what asset it is. But for this, we can actually drag off and type in get in asset, which is just gonna get whatever asset is currently loaded by this blueprint. In this case, it's gonna be the material that we cast it to. All right, now we have to check the false condition. So if an asset does not have an underscore, what happens? Well, for starters, we have to do asset fails. So if it doesn't have the correct naming convention, it's gonna fail. And then we want to copy this return node and plug this into fails. And then for this one, we're gonna say invalid. So if it fails, it's not valid. And for the asset, we want to use the exact same one. So I'm just going to duplicate that and plug that into in asset. So that's pretty much it, except now we have to add a message because we need to know what's failing if it fails. If we don't add a message, that won't happen. And Unreal actually won't even let you do this without a message. So if we hit compile, uh, it's not going to work. So for this, we have to do our validation errors. So just type in get validation errors and plug that in, which is gonna be kind of the generic errors that are provided for you by Unreal through these blueprints. And then we have to type in our custom message. So for the message, we could just grab our prefix and plug it in, it'll just convert to a text. Uh, but that's not a very helpful message, just saying M underscore as a message doesn't really tell us too much. So what we wanna do is make something a little bit more complex. So I'm actually gonna drag off of in message I'm gonna type in format text. So format text just allows you to kind of create uh, a more complex uh, setup, pulling in some variables in order to slot them into the uh, text message essentially. So for our error message, I'm gonna say missing prefix, and I'm gonna go ahead and add a colon there. And then all we have to do is add this right here. So we're going to add some curly braces in between two apostrophes. And then in here, we're going to type in prefix. And if I hit enter, you can see that it's created a second pin simply titled prefix. And we can go ahead and plug our prefix in and it's just going to convert it to a string. And all this is going to do is when this asset fails and it goes to put in a message, the message is going to be missing prefix. And then for the prefix, this part is just going to get replaced by whatever this variable is, in our case, m underscore. So now if we just go ahead and hit compile, you can see that it compiles successfully, we can save it. And we can go ahead and test it. But there is one thing we have to do. And that is actually restart the editor. So uh, asset validators are registered on engine startup. So even though we just compiled this and saved it, if you were to go and test this real quick, it wouldn't actually do anything. So we have to restart the editor first in order for this to get recognized. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. All right, I've restarted the editor and we're back. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the content browser. And you can see that we have our UBP material validator. 
So now if I were to go to, let's say, starter content, and we go over to materials, we have a bunch of materials to check here. So if we right click on materials and validate assets and folder and click yes, we can see that we checked 43 files and 43 of them passed, zero failed. So that means all of those are correct. They all start with M underscore. Now, if we were to go ahead and go back here and add a new material, and I'm just going to call this, uh, let's say, test mat underscore zero one. And as soon as I hit enter, and then I hit save, you can see that upon trying to save this asset, it was actually checked by that validator and it actually failed. And the reason it failed is because it's missing that M underscore and it actually says missing prefix M underscore and it was thrown by UBP material validator. So we can see that our uh, material validator is now working. And anytime a developer tries to create a material, if they don't name it as M underscore with a capital M, they're going to instantly get a message that tells them, hey, this isn't named correctly, please fix it. And this way you can kind of enforce very strict naming conventions, which will ultimately lead to a much cleaner project and overall better practices. So this is just a very basic tutorial going over, you know, just how to do it with a material or let's say a static mesh. But this goes a lot deeper. You can add in all kinds of checks. You could check uh, different types of textures and check their compressions to make sure that they're set as correct uh, compression. So if you wanted to check normal maps and make sure that your normal maps start with N underscore and that they are set to normal map compression, you could do all of that within one of these. You can also do map checks for your current map that's opened to make sure that uh, you don't have too many of a certain object that's very expensive and so on. So this is a very handy feature. Uh, it's definitely worth using. It's pretty easy to set up and I highly recommend it. And yeah, if this was helpful, uh, go ahead, like the video, all that kind of stuff. Um, this is just kind of a fun video to make for me just to kind of share something that I had to learn and that I don't see anywhere else. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to make a video on. And yeah, if you enjoyed it, uh, Great, and uh, hope it helped.